Hello and welcome to PD and your PJs. I'm Julie from the community team at Seesaw and I'm so excited to be here with you tonight. I'm just honored you would take some time out of your busy school week to join us for a quick Seesaw webinar. I'm excited to be here tonight with Sophia who's going to have lots of great ideas for second grade teachers. I'm gonna change the presenter over to Sophia and then she's gonna take it from there to share lots of awesome tips and tricks with you tonight. Ready to go, Sophia? Absolutely, I'm good to go. Can you see my screen, Julie? Yep. Okay, great. So, yep, we um, can see all good? Yep, you're good. All right, so this is how we seesaw in second grade. You can see that I put the link for our slides, but you'll also have them mailed to you, um, emailed to you, and you'll get uh, the link for the video of this whole recording. So if I'm moving too fast, um, just hold on, and I promise that uh, you'll get all the things that you need. So my name is Sophia Garcia-Smith. I'm a second grade teacher in Des Plaines, Illinois, right outside Chicago. And this year I have one-on-one -on -one iPads in my classroom, but we also use MacBooks. So I have a few tips and tricks about using Chromebooks slash uh, computers on some of the slides. So hopefully those will help you. I'm gonna jump right in. There's a lot to talk about and I wanna make sure I have time to talk about it all. So I'm gonna start with literacy. Um, I would say that I use Seesaw more in my literacy block than I do in my math block. Um, it just seems to lend really well to the things that I have set up. Um, and later on, I'll also show you how I uh, use those in um, other apps. And that you can then show into Seesaw. So first of all, I wanna show you the basics. So just the camera. Um, everybody hears all of these things that you can do with Seesaw with app smashing and creating in a different app and then putting everything into Seesaw so that families can see. But the camera is um, a very powerful tool, especially when you're sharing um, students learning. So I just wanna show you a few things really quick. The first one is really simple. It's a rhyming words video. And it's simply just the um, camera, the taking a picture and then adding words that rhyme with that item. Oops, hold on a second. I'm not sure if my links are working here, Julie. Oh, yeah, there we go. Okay, I'm gonna jump to this one. This one is a book review from a student. This book was about Legos and so Legos are are cool. So you can see um, this was a student who was reading at an early level, so a level E book, um, and just wanted to talk about the book. And when I can find out what they're reading, if I can find out who the characters are, the setting, all those basic things, it's really simple for them just take a picture of the book and leave me a little message about what it is they're reading. Now, the way that I track that is that I will start to um, put those in a file a folder in Seesaw, and then I will track the genre. I will check if they're trying to read a book that is higher than their reading level, um, and I can show the progress. By the time we get to our first um, parent night, uh, it's really great for parents to see that their child is making progress. Um, we also do an independent sight word center and an independent fluency center. So um, I would spend so much time with students one-on-one -on -one to test their sight words. And I knew that Seesaw was a powerful tool that I could use to kind of clone myself and uh, give me more time with the students that I really need to pay attention to. So as you can see in the independent sight word center, I have a binder that has all of the fry sight words and they're broken up into 10 word lists and then also 20 word lists depending on what level they're at. So if they're at a higher level, they'll have 20 words at a time. If they're on a lower level, they'll have five or 10 words at a time. They go over to the center and there's a list of what le uh, letter they're on, what list they're on, and they take a picture of it and then they go ahead and they record themselves showing um, that they have mastered those words. Yes. Trade, compare, poem, elements, except flat. So what I want to talk to you about with that um, sight word center also is that I have some students who need some visuals. And so what they do is they're reading the sight word list. They'll turn on the drawing tool and they'll go ahead and cross off the word as they say it. It's a great reminder for them of the words that they have accomplished. Sometimes they circle a word that they're stuck on. So when I review this later on uh, by myself, I can see that 
they've struggled on a few words and they knew that they had struggled on a few words. Um, and then in the comments, I can say, you know, great job, Joey, you uh, passed that list, go ahead and move on to the next list. And then I will change that um, on the sheet of paper that is by the Sight Word Center and uh, they'll move on to the next list. And so the progression is just going on um, without really me being that one-on-one -on -one person with it. Now, sometimes I'll send home the sight word lists um, and they can practice at home, but I try to do a lot of this within the classroom. So they'll have a sight word center where they'll have these on flashcards and they can go through the flashcards um, during their center before they decide to test themselves. And kind of the same concept for the independent fluency center. We have fluency Fridays. So every Friday our typical literacy centers are changed up a little bit just to try to get some of this assessment in. And so one of them is this Friday Fluency Center. And what they do is they take a picture, and this just happens to be a reading A to Z passage. So it has a letter um, attached to the fluency passage. And the student will go ahead and take a picture of it. But I ask them to read off the paper because sometimes you can tell the picture becomes really small. Or as you can see, I have in page protectors, the light will shine on it and give you a flashback. So um, they will take the paper and they will actually record themselves um, doing a fluency. What's nice about this is the same thing. I will go into the comments and I will give them a score. Our school decided to take down the old jungle gym. It's not safe, said the principal. It's got sharp ends and loose bars. So what I do is I go in there and then I can click on edit item, and then I can go ahead and score it just as I was it, as if I was doing it with them. So I can circle the words that were maybe miscues, I can make some notes on there, and then at the bottom in the comments, I will write how many words they read per minute, how many errors, and all that good stuff. Now that's mostly for me, and so when I explain to parents when they do get this at home, that this is more for me, but I like that they can hear their child read at least once a week out loud um, for me. Um, again, saving me, giving me more time to work with the students that I need to work with. So let me see if the rhyming words one will work here. Here it is. I found a hat. I can make words that rhyme with hat. Ah. Uh, sat. Ah. Uh, what I love about the power of the camera is that it's a simple picture. It's something that they could find around the classroom that maybe is the word family that you're studying for the week. They take a picture of it and then they can go ahead and move on to um, other words that they see. So um, some other ways I use it in literacy is word sorts. Um, we do, uh, or we have done in the past, um, words their way and all of those pieces would end up on the floor or half of the students would miss half of their pieces. And so we started to make our word sorts digitally. Now we've taken out some of the words, so it's not such a long sort for them, but this template is available with the activity link right down here. Once you get these slides, you can click on the link. It's a really simple word sort. But what I found was when you go to the activity library in Seesaw and you search word sorts, so many teachers have already created pre um, made sorts. And so if you're looking for one that's short vowels or long vowels or blends or beginning sounds or ending sounds, you may find a, an activity that is already made for you, which is really great. This activity link is just going to give you the basic my word sort in the six boxes. So what my students do, they're a little bit more um, able to do this on their own, or you can type up the labels yourself and put them all to the bottom of the screen and they would have to sort them that way my students actually type in the headers and they type in the words. Um, it takes some practice for them to get to that point, but it, a, sec a second grader can definitely do it. Now, I know some of you may not be familiar with an activity link, so I'm just gonna show it to you really quickly. If you click on the activity link, it automatically takes you into Seesaw, and then you can save the activity right here. Once you save it into yours, you'll get another button that's down here that will allow, or the three buttons, and it will allow you to edit. So let's say you don't like that I use the record button and you want to actually use the microphone or something like that. You can change any of this that you want once it is um, saved into your activity library. The second one is create a comic. This is one that we love. Um, they love to retell a story, and when they can do it in a comic format, it's fantastic. So again, this activity link will give you a blank copy of the comic book format and it will give you the directions. You simply click on it, 
and you save it to your library and then you can assign it to whoever it is that you would like to assign it to. And as you can see, the students love to draw and to retell a story. This story in particular, I think, was one that she had written about on paper and this was her final project. She wanted to uh, make a visual and record herself with that. Um, graphic organizers, love, love, love graphic organizers. There is two wonderful people, Chris and Leighton uh, Beth, that uh, have created over 300 graphic organizers for Seesaw activities. The link is again on this um, slideshow, so you'll get the link here. And all you have to do is you have to take their slides, they're made on Google Slides, and you download it as a JPEG, and then you can download it into your activity. Now, Chris is so smart that what he did was he actually put a link, an activity link next to each one of his slides. And so now you just simply click on those and then you can download this into your activities. So this could be with anything that you use. Um, what I love about graphic organizers is that I can differentiate my instruction to different groups in my reading groups, but they can all work on the same graphic organizer. So as you can see, the one um, own the word, that is um, a definition, a synonym, an antonym, and then using the word in a sentence. Um, so a great way to review your vocabulary. What sticks with you, something that um, I started a while ago was that when they are reading for their self-selected reading time to hold them accountable, they'll give me three things that maybe stuck with them about the book. And then I can make sure that um, when they are reading that there is some accountability there. And I do love the three, two, one. It works for fiction, nonfiction, you name it, you can use it. Um, the three is three things that I learned. Two is something, two things I found interesting. And the one is a question that they still have about a book that maybe they're reading. Um, it's very simple. And to show you how simple it is, I created a little tutorial video for you so that you can see how to go into the Google Slides, download it as a JPEG, and then create an activity. I also put a link here for the Seesaw shortcuts. I see a lot of people on our Facebook group are asking, how do you get those little icons to um, make the picture in the uh, directions for your activities? And so there's the Seesaw shortcuts doc that will also be included in there. Video is just like two minutes. It will uh, be really simple. I create a lot of my um, graphic organizers or a lot of my um, activity framework I do in Google Slides. It's really great to download as a JPEG and then it goes right into my activities. So also using links. So I think sometimes this is unutilized using the link button in Seesaw. So I wanted to show you a few things that I do with it. The first thing I do is I connect a YouTube video to front load a skill. So we're talking about personification. That's a big word for them. And for them to listen to me explain what it is, sometimes a quick little YouTube video that somebody has created just gives them a little bit of an idea of what it is before they come to me and they get the full lesson on it. So in the links um, option in Seesaw, you can go ahead and you can link a YouTube video in it. The other way that I use it is I share all of my digital newsletters to parents through the links. So when you click on this, it will take you to the Seesaw link. Um, and then when you click on that link, it will take you to, which I love is called, uh, Adobe Spark, but it's actually Pages is the name of the program that I use. And what it is, is it's a glide show. So when you take your fingers and you scroll up, you get the words and you also get pictures from your classroom. We take so many pictures throughout the years and year and sometimes we end up at the end of the year, we have all these pictures and we didn't use them. So I try to use as many as I can um, in my newsletters and you can see what we're doing in math. You can see what's going on with our flexible seating and our self-selected. And this was about writing about our summers and things like that. Oh, this was fun with our green screen. Our theme was Lego movies and uh, we showed how we use the green backdrop to then create these fun um, things. We also have a tweeter of the day for our account. And uh, I like to share those things with parents, especially those that aren't connected all the time with us. I wanna make sure that they get all the information that they need. So. Uh, the digital newsletter is a great way to do it. Again, if you create it in another app, you can just put the link in there. And there's two ways to do this now that Seesaw has this amazing thing called messaging. You can now put a link into the um, messages and the notifications and send it out to parents that way. Or you can just simply put it into their um, journal and then parents would get the link that way. The other thing that I love is to uh, link a Google form in there. 
So whenever I have parents, like I say, hey, we're going to the zoo and a field trip in May, and I would love some volunteers. Is there anybody who would like to go? Instead of making copies and sending all those papers out, I can put a Google form link right into the portfolio or into the uh, message, send it to parents, and then the responses will come right to me. Um, same thing with slide decks into Seesaw for quick access. So this was a project that I worked on with my students, and it was a trading cards, and we were talking about biographies. And so I just sent them the link to my slide deck. This is view only now because it's a completed project, but it would have the authorization for them to go ahead and do what they needed to do. And what they had to do was they had to research um, one, of the, one of the people that they had collected some information on, and they did a biography uh, trading card. Again, this template is from Chris and those 300 templates you'll get. I just went in and I changed a little bit so that it fit my project. But that's what's great about the Google Slides is that you can see each child got their own slide, each child did their own um, write up on a person that they wanted to uh, share with the rest of us. So make sure that you utilize that link. Sometimes I feel like that's the last thing that some people use and I find it so um, simple, especially for second graders, to be able to click on and get right to where they need to be instead of trying to click four ways. Um, I'm going to talk a little bit about QR codes because I do love to use a QR code, especially with our younger students. It's so easy for them to scan a QR code and take them directly to where you need them to be. Then you're not worrying, fussing about websites and if they got the right letters correct, if they put the dot in the right way and all that good stuff. So three ways that I use QR codes in the classroom is that students can record their voice giving a book review. So they would do that in Seesaw. And then I would turn that into a QR code. If you're not sure how to do that, those three dots that are on the, each post, if you click on that and it says get QR code, you can get a QR code that's exactly for the post that you clicked on. And so what they did is they recorded their voice giving a book review. And then I have these little um, plastic sleeve pockets so I can change out those QR codes with different students who have done different uh, book reviews. And that's a book review. The second one down here that is a green QR code, um, lots of YouTube read aloud videos. There's lots of grandmas out there who are reading to their grandkids over the internet. And I snatch those up. I turn it into a QR code. I put it in as a link in Seesaw. Then I turn it into a QR code and I paste the QR code again in those little pockets and I put it in there and now that is now a read aloud. Um, so they can take that home. If they have a QR reader, they can hear it um, read to them as they're uh, paging through the book. And the last way is I create a link for student-friendly websites. You know how hard it is for second grade teachers to spend so much time trying to find safe second sources for students who want to do research on caves, on mummies, on volcanoes, whatever it may be. So what I've done is I've also taken a QR code of a website link and I've put it on the book. So now the student, if he's gonna do a report on caves, he has two sources, he has the book, and then the QR code will give him a website that is um, student friendly. Quick way that I keep track of my classroom library. Um, this came to me last year because I was spending so much time finding who took what book out and if it was returned and all that good stuff. And I decided to use Seesaw as a way to manage that. So I created what's called a fake student or a student in my classroom that's called the classroom library checkout. And when a student browses a book, they take a picture of the book and they tag themselves if they're not already signed in and the classroom library. When the book comes back to me, it's then deleted. What's nice about this is that some parents have said, oh, you know, I know Johnny read this or read that. So sometimes I don't delete depending on if I'm trying to keep track of uh, genres that students are reading or what they're reading throughout the year they're taking home. There's a PDA in your PJs link here that I did a really quick, I think it's a 15 minute PD in your PJs on the library um, hack that I have there. Um, I'm gonna jump to math. So again, what I love about is just the camera. The camera and the video is so powerful. The first one is simply we're doing place value and you can see that they've taken the place value blocks right here and they've gone ahead and they've just entered the number, 373 um, blocks that were there. Um, quick assessment for me, great formative assessment to see if it's something that they are understanding or not. We do a lot of stuff with Legos. We have a large Lego collection in our classroom. So we do Lego math and it's simple questions like this. Find 13 red bricks, add six blue bricks, and how many bricks do you have? So they're showing um, their work 
and they also usually record themselves so that they can tell me how it is that they uh, solve the problem. This is a great video of a student who is playing, I think it was called the Hulk Punch or something like that. Um, and he was showing his work. I'm gonna hit the play button, let's see if it works. And uh, you could just see really quick formative assessment. Six, eight, so what I love about this video is that he's writing on the table, he is showing me his work, and at the same time, I can hear the way that he's thinking. He's waiting to see if the answer is correct. This is in a small group, and then he gets to put on the Hulk hand, and he gets to smash it to show that he got it. Yeah, and so you can see um, how enjoyable it is for them to have fun things like that. So when that video goes home, mom and dad are really excited that he is definitely getting the regrouping process and uh, moving along in math as I want him to. Again, formative assessment for me, fun for them. Mom and dad get to see what's going on. We also do something called the math uh, daily math word problem of the day. And this is a great set. It's from Teachers Pay Teachers, and I put the link right here for you. And what it is, is it's a word problem here. What I love about what she did was that she puts the standard at the top. So it's great to kind of pick and choose um, what standard I'm working on and pull those word problems. They have to draw a picture of the problem. They have to write a number sentence. And then because this says, this is how I solve the problem, way too small of a space for them to do anything for writing. And so what I do is I make them record themselves and they can record themselves um, explaining their math. And this is the part that I would say has changed my teaching the most um, with Seesaw. When you can see a child thinking, it opens up the way that you teach. You begin to change the way that you introduce items. You change the way that you are in the middle of teaching it, and you definitely change the way that you end a lesson. And so I'm gonna give you a quick peek of this. Tree farmers was planting saplings. They're painted 104 trees. The second load had one and a half to plant. This is how I drew my picture. I had one and a hundred, four ones, 50 tens, and six ones. So you could see she's using a strategy of place value, and that was really awesome for me to see that she um, understood the place value. She could draw a picture about it. She could write a number sentence, and she could um, tell me all of her thinking and her answer. So I love this. This is every single day in my classroom. It is part of my daily rota uh, rotations in my math group. And I tell parents, you know, turn off your notifications. If you don't want this notification, it will come every day between 120 and 145, uh, depending on how quickly I can get to it and um, approve it. But uh, yeah, every day, and it's fantastic. I've definitely seen a difference in the way that they're doing on some standardized testing because they've had so much experience with their word problems. So here's the QR codes in math. So again, I told you how much I love the QR codes. There's two ways that I really use it. Um, the students solve math problems when they complete the scan, the QR code to check their work. So this will be the problem of the day right here. They'll go and they'll enter it into their iPads and they'll solve it, or maybe it's on paper. And then they can come back once they're finished and it's self-checked. So then at the center, I'll only have red pens out or green pens or blue pens. And I'll say, you can check your work. It's not about whether the answer is right or wrong. It's about whether we're learning. And so they get to scan the QR code. And when they scan the QR code, it is the finished product. And the finished product is usually by one of my students. It's not by me so that they can see um, who that was. We also have what's called math ninjas in our room. And those are the people who really get a concept and feel like they could teach it to another student. And so if they got this wrong and they don't understand how this answer was done, they can go see a math ninja in the classroom and get clarification on it. The other way I love it is QR codes in the math is that my math tubs. So if it's a game that they have not played before, I will videotape myself, usually not my face, it's my hands and whatever else, and I will give a quick video of what this game looks like. So when they go to Math Tub 1, if they've never played this game before, they can scan the QR code and it would be this video that they would see, then they can take the game in an independent center and they can uh, take, take it away with them um, to an area where they can work on it. 
So I'm really big in digital citizenship. I love that our kids have so much technology, but I also want to make sure that the technology that they have is being used in an appropriate way. So um, we started this a few years ago. It's called TAG, so it's called Let's Play TAG, and it focuses on appropriate and effective commenting. Um, the way I explain it to parents and students is that if I give you a heart or a smiley face on a piece of your work, you understand that I like your work, but you don't understand what I like about your work. And that is what's so important. When you get feedback, it makes you a better reader. It makes you a better mathematician. It makes you a better scientist. And so this is what we start with. I love an anchor chart. So we make the anchor chart together. And the T stands for tell me something you like. The A is for ask a question. And the G is for give me a suggestion. And when we give suggestions, we use the words I wonder. We don't want anyone to have hurt feelings because um, you know, we said something that was not nice. We're just adding our advice to them. We're giving them a suggestion. When you get the slides, you will get the offline template that I use. This is done offline before we go online and create any comments. Then there's also a parent letter that goes home. I know that someone on Facebook was just asking about this. The parents were commenting um, like, hey, did Johnny leave his pencil at school on work that was shared with Seesaw? And that wasn't the purpose of her sharing the student's work. And so she wanted to make sure that there was a way that parents understood that when we comment at school using TAG, we would appreciate it if you would maybe show some of that um, in your commenting at home. We also made the Seesaw activity link. So there's one for the T, the A, and the G. If you click on those, they'll go right into your activity um, things. And here it is again. Tell me something you liked. I like how you sorted your pictures. Ask a question. Have you read other books? Give me a suggestion. I wonder what it would look like had you added labels. So quick examples of what TAG is. There is a PD in your PJs about TAG, and I will add it to this because I think I forgot to. Um, I just want to show you some really quick tips and tricks that I have learned from um, using Seesaw for quite a while. One of them is to record on multiple pages or multiple images. There are so many different ways that you can do it. So Puppet EDU is one of my favorite. Book Creator is another. Pick Collage, Adobe Voice Spark Video to record on multiple pictures and pages. If you create in a different um, app, it can be saved to the camera roll, and then the camera roll can go right into Seesaw. What if you only have a few devices? Um, have recording stations set up in the classroom. Rotate them in centers, and then they can complete an exit ticket. Some people, it's easier for you to do a paper copy of an exit ticket, but when you can take a picture of that exit ticket and add a student's voice to it, it gives you so much more information on what they learned, what they know, and what they might need help with. Another tip and trick is don't forget that if you have a PDF document, you cannot write on it. It must be a JPEG or a PNG. And so this just gives you an idea of what you can add to it. You can add audio, caption, drawing, and label. If you have a PDF and you download it as a PDF, you can only add audio or a caption. So I just want to make sure that you understand that. A lot of PDFs you can change into a JPEG, and then it opens up a lot more options for your students to use when they're speaking. Um, tips and tricks. Here's another one, taking photos on Chromebooks. Use two pieces of tape, one at the edge of the table and one at the other side of the table. This is just a crate that has a clipboard taped to it, and the students put their paper on the clipboard, then they put their computers at the other part of the tape, and all they have to do then is worry about the angle. They just check the angle, but it will take a pit perfect picture of an eight and a half by 11 piece of paper um, by just hitting the space bar. If you hit the space bar, it also is like the enter button. Sometimes you get their arms in there when they're trying to take a picture and they're trying to cross over to get to the enter position. So um, hopefully that's a great tip. I know I've had a lot of people say this is something that has worked wonders in their classroom. Two pieces of duct tape is all you need. Also drawing on Chromebooks. Using a stylus, the students have much better control on the trackpad if you use a stylus. And so all the stylus does is you have to push down as you're drawing, but instead of the student trying to click and push at the same time, this gives them much better control. It does take some time to train them how to do it correctly, but after a few times, the students have been doing great on it with their um, trackpads and their stylus. And I always get a question, what stylus do I like? Really, anything that you can find and doesn't um, break apart too simply is always what's best. Um, how about for recording booths? Simple, simple, simple. There are people who have come up with some amazing things, and mine are simply boxes that are duct taped to make it pretty. 
there's a little uh, tap light that goes on the top of the box. And as students are in use, they turn the light on. So students know that when the light's on, they should walk past quietly. I also love these. Native Union is the name of the brand that I've tried that I really like. I've tried some other brands and they didn't last so long. They're the uh, retro headsets and they plug right into your computers and into your iPads so that you can have a recording device. And kids love it because of course they don't see those phones uh, very often. Um, I don't know how much more time we have, Julie. Um, app smashing with Seesaw. There are so many um, ideas that I kept at the end of the slides. If you have any questions or you want some specific examples on um, app smashing, you are more than welcome to click on any of these, check them out, uh, send me a tweet, um, email me, whatever I can do to help you get started with something. Um, I would be happy to. I can use book trailers, I use Adobe Spark, I use Poplet, I use Write Reader. There's so many things uh, in the math stuff. I love School Kit uh, Math. It is an app for um, just iPads, and this one is fantastic. It's mathlearningcenter.org. Um, there is an activity link for this hundreds chart that's uh, linked there. Uh, this one is a app smashing with Google Slides. This amazing human being, her name is Susan Stewart. She started the K2 Can2 um, movement for teachers who um, are primary. Um, she has this website and she will give you a free set of these slides that will allow students to move the quarters and the dimes and things like that. And as you can see, they're counting at the bottom. So a great assessment. Um, Sophia, this was wonderful. I'm going to give everybody a quick reminder to make sure after we conclude the webinar here in a few minutes that you answer the survey questions that pop up on your screen. That's how we make these sessions better and we really value your feedback, but we still have plenty of time for questions and I have a few good ones waiting for you, Sophia. So I'm going to go through the question box and please listeners feel free to um, ask some more questions and I'll read them out loud to Sophia. We have plenty of time. Um, Sophia, one quick question that Joyce is asking, if you remember off the top of your head, where did your plastic sleeve pockets for your QR codes come from? They came from the Target dollar section. So it's usually that right before school starts and they're a funky size. So there's like really big ones that I kind of cut into three pieces. And then there's other ones that are really long that I just cut in half. So yes, Snatch those up if you see them at the dollar section um, at Target. Definitely worth it. I, I tell you, that Target dollar spot, teacher's favorite spot, huh? Um, okay, so Maisie is asking, and this is a good like behavior modification question. She's asking, like, what do you do about students who continually use your the seesaw, like commenting incorrectly even after you've trained it and gone over all of that correctly? Like, if you have a student using any of that incorrectly, what do you do? Yeah, great question. So because we start offline and not online, I'm seeing every single thing that comes through on paper first. And so we may do that for the first five or six things that they're commenting on. And what I do is I make sure that that becomes one center for me where students will spend one-on-one -on -one time with me. We will talk about what their comment says and why it's a good comment or what letter it matches and all of that good stuff. So there's nothing that's getting posted that doesn't come through me first. Um, and when there is a question about a comment, I will pull them aside and we will have the conversation again about, you know, what is the point of commenting? We are trying to give feedback to somebody to make them a better reader or mathematician or scientist or whatever else it may be. Um, and then we'll talk about whether their um, comment was one of those things. And I will tell you, my students are probably the best police of themselves and of their parents. Once I get parents going on the tag, the students will say, you know, my mom gave me a heart today and I'm going to have to go home and talk to her about why she wrote heart because she can't just heart something without telling me why she hearted it. So that kind of um, feedback is hysterical for me. I'm so glad they're getting the point of it. That's so great, Sophia. I love that. And of course, you're very well known for your TAG acronym. We use it a lot and a lot of teachers ask for that. So thank you for developing that. A um, couple of other things I should throw out there too, and we do have a couple more questions and feel free to type in some more things if you're thinking of them. Um, if you've never attended our brand new to Seesaw webinar for grades pre-K through two, please go ahead and register for that. And I put the link in the chat box, um, not the question box, but the chat box of GoToWebinar. I really think you would benefit from that 
that in this case, Sophia is talking about some ways that she uses Seesaw in second grade, but we really weren't talking about how to set up a class or how to add students. So if you're like in need of that kind of resource, make sure you're looking at those Seesaw webinars that are called brand new to Seesaw for grades pre-K2. Okay, and then I have a couple of other things waiting here, um, Sophia. Um, do you have trouble getting parents connected? Holly's asking for like your best strategies for how to get 100% participation. Um, so Holly, I am so happy you asked this question because we had a event this summer and I was so lucky to be able to talk to Carl, who is one of the um, inventors of Seesaw, the creators, and we had a great conversation about this. I work in a school district where some of our parents do not have internet access in their homes and the only thing they do have is their cell phone and a lot of times they're playing for paying for a data plan. So I have a lot of parents who are very leery of signing up for Seesaw. And so the way that I've worked around it, because it's not about whether I get 100%, I would love that. That is my ultimate goal. However, I understand the obstacles that there are, and I understand parents who are a little leery about just jumping into something that they may have never tried before. So what I have done is I've created a blog for our classroom, and every Friday our students post two of their items onto the blog. Now what I do is I take the blog URL and I turn it into a QR code and I send that home and say, hey mom and dad, don't forget to look at what I worked on this week and parents can scan that. Now how do I get parents to um, buy into the QR code? At curriculum night, I say to parents, this is a free app. I promise it does not take up a lot of memory on your phone. Please keep it on your phone and when you see this funky little QR code thing come home, scan it because it's something important that your child wants you to see. And so that's one way that I have really worked hard on making sure that all of our parents are being able to see their child's work, whether they're connected through Seesaw or whether it's through the blog. So definitely something to look into. That's super helpful, Sophia. Um, I have a couple of tips I would throw out too. Um, I was a tech integration integrationist along with being a high school ELA teacher and when I was working with some of those teachers in younger grades sometimes we'd have an event where we'd invite parents into the classroom and have the parents complete an activity hands-on with a student any kind of task on like an iPad or a device and so that was a way to get parents kind of acquainted with the app and the equipment that the student was using so that was kind of nice and then you could even also think about like a student-led conference too like if a parent can't connect to Seesaw and keep track of all of that or keep um, look at those items and those posts and notifications every day. They could at least do it once a semester or once a quarter and have kind of that experience where the student is going through their CSL journal with them as part of, of a student-led conference. So even if you can even get them in the door for like that normal time that we think of as a parent-teacher conference, if you can involve the students, that's helpful too. Mm -hmm. And actually making yourself available. You know, I'll say to parents, if you're having problems or you're just frustrated with trying to log on, you know, I can be here 10 minutes before school starts and 10 minutes after, please come see me and I'll be able to do that. So I've had a few parents take me up on that. It's just a little bit overwhelming for them to think about doing something if they're not really a techie kind of person. No, absolutely. And I think so many adults do everything from their phones. Now it's nice that you meet them where they're at and say, if you want to use this on your smartphone, you can, I think that's, or any kind of phone. I think that's super helpful. Okay. One other question waiting for you, Sophia, too, is from Cassandra. And I used Adobe Spark as well in my classroom. She's just kind of asking, um, do these students have their own accounts? Because I think sometimes there they have to be 13 and up. I'm assuming you just do it all from your teacher account. That's what I did on Adobe Spark. Yes, absolutely. However, Adobe Spark or Adobe just came out with Adobe Education. So there is a way now for you to get accounts in your student's name under your um, sign in. I'm not sure on all the details. Our district just sent out a message saying, hey, teachers who use this, let us know if you're using it. And we would love to set you up on the education app. So definitely something to look into. I have not looked into it before all of this started to happen just within the past few weeks, I was able to sign in as a teacher account and then the students were all uh, logged in as me. I, I was doing it the same way and or if you're using it to create something like a digital newsletter, that's kind of an adult's creation and not a kid's creation and they would not need their account for that. So yeah, good to, good to know though and something you can kind of look into, Cassandra. Okay, Sophia, our question box is empty for now, but I do want to remind everybody the slides and the recording are coming your way. So you'll have that in just a few hours and of course also included in the email you'll get is a PD certificate. So if you need 
to have documentation that you attended this presentation that's coming your way too. Um, so then when you watch the recording, you can do that at your own leisure and pause it however much you want. And I think the best thing you're gonna get is Sophia's slides because you'll be able to click through those and click on all of the wonderful links. She really has lots of awesome resources to share. So thank you so much, Sophia. This was wonderful. And I can't wait to see you all here again really soon. Good night, Bye -bye. everybody.